Tens of thousands of Congolese flee back home after attacks in Angola. We'll speak to a journalist on the border. We'll also find out why the Italian interior minister has ordered the transfer of all migrants from a small town in Italy. Will the former sports minister and other senior officials in Kenya charged with corruption hand themselves in to the authorities? And we'll hear about a Sudanese film, a comedy and love story set in the heart of the war zone. I wanted to create an image that of people who are living life and they're happy and their normal lives. Even if their normal life is a war zone? Even if their normal life it gets interrupted by war all the time. We've lined up those stories for you. Stay with us. They're all coming up after this Bulletin of World News. BBC News with Sue Montgomery. The United Nations is warning that Yemen may soon start to face famine on a massive scale if the war continues and aid does not reach the population. The UN's resident coordinator to Yemen, Lisa Grande, told the BBC the crisis was putting 13 million people at risk of starvation. 90% of all of the commodities that are needed in northern Yemen come through the ports of Hudaydah and just north of Darul Saleh. 70% of all humanitarian assistance that comes into Yemen also comes through exactly those same ports. This is why we have said to all the belligerents, keep the ports open. If those ports close, there will be millions of people who will not have what they need in order to survive. President Trump has said he accepts that the global climate is changing, but he doesn't know if it's man-made. In the interview with Leslie Stahl on the CBS 60 Minutes program, he went on to qualify his comments. I'm not denying climate change, but it could very well go back. You know, we're talking about well, over millions denying. of years. They say that we had hurricanes that were far worse than what we just had with Michael. Who says that? They say. Well, well, the people, people, say the people say that in the... Yeah, but what about the scientists who say it's worse than ever? Uh, you have to show me the scientists because... They have a very big political agenda. King Salman of Saudi Arabia has spoken by telephone with the Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan to discuss a joint investigation into the disappearance in Istanbul earlier this month of a prominent Saudi journalist. The Saudis deny allegations that Jamal Khashoggi was murdered in their consulate there. David Bamford reports. In a signal that the Saudi King Salman bin Abdulaziz may be seeking a diplomatic solution to the Hashaki affair, it's emerged that he and the Turkish president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, have spoken directly by telephone. Saudi state media said the king stressed the strength of Saudi-Turkish ties and thanked Mr Erdogan for welcoming a Saudi proposal to form a joint working group to discuss the disappearance of Jamal Khashoggi.